Today we're going to look at making a segmented control like this one. We're going to be looking at two different ways of doing it, one with a more funky animation and one with a bit more smooth animation. Segmented controls exist in almost every type of mobile OS and they also exist on web quite a lot. Let's jump straight in. We're going to start by creating the labels. Click on T, tap in and then just write label. I'm using the font Poppins just because it's a font that I really like and I'm using a center align of the text. This will help us later so that it could be super, super dynamic. Once I do that, I'm going to drop this label into an auto layout. So I'm going to shift A and don't worry if you're not too familiar with auto layouts, we're not going to use them too much. I'm happy with the kind of default padding that it's going to give me, but I just want to make sure that the alignment of the items within the auto layout is aligned to the center that will keep the label in the center. I'm going to give it a background color, so just give it a white background, and then I'm going to duplicate it. Hold down the frame and then hold down option to duplicate. This one is going to be a hover state. So when you're hovering over it, I want it to have some sort of background color. So I'm going to change the fill color to something really light, maybe this kind of lightness and then make it purple. Next, we want to create the selected state. So for that, I'm going to duplicate again, holding down option, and then I'm going to give it some rounded corners, maybe give it eight rounded corners. And I'm going to make the background color the same kind of color that I used, just with a bit more oomph to it. I want to change the text as well, maybe make it bold, maybe make it white as well. Perfect. So now we have kind of three states. We have our default, our hover, and our selected. Now at this point, I want to make them into a component and they'll have different variations. What I can do before actually making them into a component together is just rename them so I have my variants already there when I get started. I'm going to select all three, command R, and say state equals. This will be our property. Now I'm going to give each one the values. Select this one, command R, and kind of move to the right with the arrow. And I'm going to say um, default, this one is command R and then write hover. And then this one is command R and then write and selected. Now what this will do is I did that really simple step. And when I select them now and say create component set, you see that that variation is already in there and I don't need to go and do anything. We already have the variants ready to go. I'm going to change the name of this component to label just so it's all kind of neat and organized. Before we create a segmented control, we want to add some interactions on this component level. So let's do that now. So we know that when we're on this label, we need to swap to this one when we're hovering. So I'm going to use noodles for this. I'm just going to drag a noodle between the two and say, while hovering, change to state hover. Perfect. And I'm going to make it smart animate just so it's a bit more fancy. Now I need to set the click one. And remember, when you're using hover states, the click comes from the hover because if the mouse is over this one it swaps to this one so this is the one you'll be clicking on to get to here not this one so I'm gonna click on this drag my noodle down and say on click change to this one and smart animate is there that's great for us we go into our assets panel I'm just gonna drag a label out and I want three more of these labels to create a segmented control right so I'm gonna shift a just remove the padding so I'm gonna command and click in to remove all the padding from that auto layout and change the direction to right and also remove the spacing. So we have our label now inside of an auto layout that's completely zeroed out. So it has you know no spacing, no padding. I'm gonna duplicate this label twice more. So we have two of them, great. Um, and then let's just change the text a bit. So we know that it's kind of saying different things. So the first one I'm gonna say one, maybe two and now this is a bit small it's only 142 pixels wide so I'm gonna just drag it out and once I do that you can see that the labels are kind of staying there so I'm gonna enter to select those labels and say fill container that means that they're gonna take up as much space as they can inside of this auto layout great now we know that the first one should probably be selected because at no point none of them are going to be selected so i'm going to just change that now i'm just going to create a frame i'm clicking on f and just dragging to create a little frame here and i'll drop our segmented control into it so i'm going to put that here and then go into prototype start a flow and i'm just going to play this and we're going to see how we did i'm going to command and plus just to bring it in a bit closer hover state perfect now let's try and click on one of them Okay, so it works, but it doesn't really work, does it? What's happening is it, the, all the interactions that we set up are working, but now we're not swapping between them. How can we fix that? Let's go in and do this again. So I'm gonna grab this one and just duplicate it, bring it over here. We need to create those three different states and put some connections between them. So I'm gonna duplicate this one and duplicate this one. I'm gonna say this one now is selected this one is selected and bring it back to default. So we've created those three different states for us. Okay, at this point, I'm going to use my renaming trick again. So I'm going to say Command R, 
and then say selected equal and then they're one two and three so I could just use this quick numbering tool I click on that and by the way cool little trick right now you see it says zero one zero two if I delete one of these ends it's just gonna put one digit rather than that zero ahead of it I'm gonna make these three into a component set great properties and values already here for my variants. Now I need to create interactions between these. Double click into here, you see I've selected the second one. When they click on this, they change to that. When they click on this one, they change to that. And do that for everything. Three to three, two to two, one to one, one to one. So that is all connected now. Let's see how this works. So I'm gonna come up here and then let's create a second flow. I'm gonna delete this one and grab this instead, copying this one into here. So now this is kind of our second attempt of it. So let's create another flow and just play it. Let's see what happens now. So hover states are working perfectly. Clicking on this one, boom. Clicking on this one, boom. Clicking on this one, boom. We're done. Yes, so that works absolutely perfectly. So that is our first way to do it. That's just kind of smooth. But what if we want this purple box to kind of zoom in between them? Let's do that now. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna take these two and I'm gonna duplicate them over here and I'm gonna change all of my purple to something else so we can just track this going forward. So I'm gonna say instead of this purple, I'm just gonna change the hue to something else and then for the light one as well. Great, so now we can just differentiate between the two. With this one, what I wanna do is I want that rectangle to kind of zoom along with me, okay? Now in order to do that, it needs to be the same one. If we want Smart Animate to know that this rectangle is the same rectangle as this one and is the same one as this one, we need to use the actual same object. And right now we're not, right? This is the third label and it's this one is this one and this one. This one isn't this one. So what we are going to do is we're going to revamp this a tiny bit. So first of all, I'm gonna take this label and remove the background from it. So this one doesn't have any background anymore when it's selected. Instead, I'm gonna drop in a new sort of shape. So I'm going to add a frame that will be the background. You can do this with a rectangle as well, but you know I don't really like shapes. I prefer to work with frames all the time because then I can give them constraints and stuff like that. So I'm gonna say F and let's drop one in here. Automatically, it's gonna ruin everything. First things first, I'm going to give it a fill color. So I'm gonna give it a color, make it that kind of blue that we used before, and then give it some rounded corners, so eight. Great, now I can see it so I know what I'm working with. I want it to be the same size as the rest of my auto layout, so I'm gonna say fill container instead of fixed, so it takes up the same height as the other items within it. As you can see, it's in the way, it's in the auto layout, and it's taking up space as it should. But I want it to be behind it. The way to do that is to just click here and that will turn on absolute position, which means it's inside of the auto layout, but it's not listening to the rules of the auto layout. You see already it's kind of hovering over and it has this little kind of frame around it in the layers panel. I'm gonna say go all the way to the left because it needs to be all the way to the left. And I can see that it's not quite the correct size. So I'm just gonna change it a bit. Great. And then I wanna move it so it's behind everything. So I'm going to use the brackets. I'm gonna use the left bracket and that will move it kind of behind of the text. I'm gonna rename it because right now it's called frame two and that means nothing. So command R and I'm gonna call it selected. And I'm gonna copy this one and bring it into the others as well. So I'm gonna command C, select the second segment and control, command V, put it in the middle and then left bracket copy it again and then paste it into here, all the way to the right and left bracket. So I've got this selected thing now behind all three of them. I used the same segmented control I used before, so the prototyping is all there. Let's drop it into a frame and see what happens. I'm gonna duplicate this frame. I'm gonna remove this one and then just paste this one in here. Now let's add a flow and play it. Okay, so we're nearly there, but something is happening. What's happening? You see that blue is going underneath. The reason for that is because the labels have a white background. So if I go into this label and just remove that background, I'm just gonna do that. Um, and then go into here again and just click on R to restart it. Boom, look at that. So this is kind of that funky step that we talked about. If we wanna make it even more funky, we can play around with the different kinds of animations. So if I go into here and I just select all of these noodles at once, or at least all the ones that I can, I'm still missing out two here, and change it from ease out to let's say bouncy. I'm gonna change these two as well. So you see now it's says mix, so I've selected the top one as well. Change it to bouncy. If I run flow three again, now if I click on three, whoa. 
funky town, yeah? So that is the kind of extra funky way to do it. I know I said smooth and funky, but you're a great viewer, so you get an extra funky. And that's it. That was a really quick way of making a little segmented control in three different animation ways. You can use this kind of trick and interactions on the component level in so many different ways. I really recommend you watch my advanced prototyping session, which I will drop over here. Um, and over there, you get some more tips into how to do this in even more ways. I really hope you enjoyed. Please leave a comment below. Let me know if you've used this. Let me know your favorite ways of using component interactions. See you at the next one.